Hey everyone, for this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make extra income using DoorDash. Welcome to another episode of Trying Remote, where I try a new remote job or gig every single month to show you the ins and outs of remote work, and maybe it'll push you towards the direction of making this into a full-time freedom lifestyle for yourself as well. So for this episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I was able to make extra income using the app DoorDash. Now, I do have to disclose that I wasn't the only one that was doing this. I actually got my husband to do some of the work with me and we were able to do it several times just to compare and contrast several locations because we do live in New York City and the first time that he was able to do it, it wasn't fun <laughs> to say the least. And the second one, I did go along with him to a new location so we can compare and contrast if there was a difference between a location when doing DoorDash. So before we get started, if you do not know what DoorDash is, it's a delivery app where you can either become the delivery person or somebody who asks for a delivery, for example, groceries, uh, food from restaurants or any other items, even pet stores. So this is a really great app for people to make their life more efficient. I chose this side gig because you can use the app and you can work from literally anywhere in the United States as well as Canada, Australia, and Japan. So it does give you some really great location to work with, especially if you're from the United States. You can literally turn on this app and make extra income from pretty much anywhere you want. And this is a really great side gig as well because you do not need any previous experience in order to get accepted to work on the app. You just need to get your ID going. They make sure that they run a background check on you so that they know that you are somebody who is not a criminal, that you can be trusted to deliver things to people's houses. And once you are approved for the background check, then you could start uh, working right away for the app. So it's very simple. You don't need any previous experience as long as you have a phone, you pass the background check and you have a, um, a way to move around like a car, a bicycle, a motor pad, whatever it is that you have, then you can get started working for DoorDash. To give you more of a personal take on this, because I did only go once with the hubby, uh, we did this twice, I want to take him into this video so he can explain to you how he was able to do it and what his experience was like. So here we go. This is the hubby. Hi, hubby. Hello, how are you today? I'm good. So this is my husband and he actually helped me do DoorDash. If anything, you did most of the work, right? Yeah, I did it. You, <laughs> you watched. I did. I just watched him. So for DoorDash, I know that this was your first time doing this. We've never done this before, but I thought it was a really great app to kind of experiment because like I had mentioned before, it's great for beginners. What was your experience like when you did it the first time? Because you did it for how long? Almost five hours, right? Yeah, the first day it was like five hours. But, um, you know, one of the things that was great about it, it was easy to set up. It took like a few hours and then once your id was verified like i think it took like a day or two and you could just start driving literally like that day so the the speed in which you can get started uh is definitely a plus i i remember mm -hmm. that because we had done it i i don't re even know what day it was and then it took probably like 10 minutes to put all the information yeah. right like 10 minutes to set it up and then like it took maybe a day to verify everything yeah, and then you were able to get started right after once it got verified. And then the day later, you were able to get started right away and just start doing it. Yeah, it, it happened pretty quick. Like she said, it was, you know, 10 minutes of entering things and verifying your ID, taking pictures of yourself. And uh, the next day you were able to drive. So tell us about your first experience, the first time you did DoorDash. Okay, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> It, it was it was um 
it was interesting to say the least. So one of the things we live in New York City, and so one of the things that happened over there, I guess, like certain areas, they're just not going to tip you that well, and that's the bottom line about like, um, you know, I, I I went to some place in Manhattan. You could say like, oh well, you know. Why'd you go to Manhattan? I was like, I didn't even realize where I was agreeing to. I figured it would just filter out where I was. So once I took my little trip to Manhattan, made no tip and probably made like $5, maybe less. With the risk of getting tickets, I had to have a doorman watch my car. (laughs) And I had to go up to like the 21st floor. But you know, the whole time I'm worried about getting a ticket for my car. So I'm not saying like this is a reason not to do it. What I'm saying is pay attention to what you're clicking on before you accept the job because you don't have to accept things that are, uh, you know, not worth it. I mean, this person literally asked me to drive 20, 20, 30 minutes to go to Manhattan to, um, you know, deliver basically $10, $20 worth of groceries. And uh, I think they just did it to get the rice. And then on top of that, didn't want to give me a tip or anything. So it's like, probably made five dollars or less yeah so that's one of the things that kind of sucks about doordash is that if i mean obviously once you get started and you get more comfortable you learn all the ins and outs you you learn all of these things but that was your first time and you literally drove an hour back and forth and then nobody gave you a tip and that's the thing you don't just deliver this you have to find the place and if you live in a city where there's no parking you could get a ticket and also so there's a lot of things that that come into play with all of this yeah and i think that's why um a lot of people in new york city you'll see them they're on bikes like most people don't drive when you're doing this in a city where there's a lot of um, people and there's not enough parking and then now with the gra- gas prices going up you have to worry about all of these things um, but then it was different when we went to Long Island where it wasn't a city it was a lot easier because you didn't really have to worry about parking and things were a lot closer to each other as well, right? And you had the foresight now, you knew like what to say yes to and what to say no to as well. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really make that much money at that time, but we only spent two hours. And not only that, I, I don't even think it was like the peak time, but the, when I did it in New York City, I guess there's just too many people doing it, like uh, delivering stuff. So, you know, like they're literally like paying $3 to drive something around. And granted, if I had to go like a mile, it's like $3 in probably five minutes. That's probably not that bad. When we started going to Long Island, it was a lot different because there was more parking. This was more residential area. It wasn't huge buildings. And it's not like in New York City where you literally can't find any parking anywhere. With that one, I think we did four deliveries or something like that. that. And you got tipped like three times out of the four, right? Yeah, I think so. I think I got tipped like a few times. Um, I think also it was it was a time we went. I don't even know if it was really that good because I wasn't getting yeah. a lot of deliveries. It wasn't peak time. No, it wasn't peak time. It was on the weekend, like probably like uh, around dinner time or something where probably most people want to go out if they're going to like go eat yeah. dinner somewhere. No, it was actually before dinner time. Oh, it was before dinner time. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so it wasn't exactly peak time, but um, still did well. but we still did all right. So I think, I don't know, we made like $15 and probably like, no, I don't it was know. Like- 10 something. 10 something. Okay. Yeah. So it was like $10 and 27 cents for an hour and maybe 15 minutes of work. But then if you also, you have to understand, you have to take away what you paid in terms of gas, um, you know, and also looking at your time, like, what are you doing? So, yeah. So how would you say your experience was overall? Well, I think, you know, it's definitely like something maybe in initially that you're not going to do all that great. But I think some people, um, you know, if they're persistent with it and they kind of know the areas and understand the peak times, I could see how your money would go up. Cause there were times where I got like maybe on the first day, three or four deliveries, like really back to back. And they were all close to it. Like one place it was like, I think it was either Chinese food or something I delivered. And it literally took me like four or five minutes to, I'm, I'm not even kidding, four or five minutes. And I made like $3, yeah. which you're like, if I could do that, <laughs> that's pretty good, you know? Yeah. So it, 
uh, from from your experience and what I've seen, it really depends on the location and the times that you are doing this in. So thanks, hubby. I appreciate it. Thank you. So that was the hubby, everyone. He gave you his take on our experience with DoorDash. And honestly, it was, you know, mostly his work but we wanted to try this app because again it's really simple you don't need experience and we also wanted to see if you can create really good or even decent amount of side hustle income from this app and again there's pros and cons to it and we will get more into that in our next video and a few more tips that we have learned from using the DoorDash app I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned from it and make sure to subscribe down below to get more information and how you can start finding new remote jobs online from my videos where I try new online gigs every single month to give you a glimpse of what it's like. Thank you again for being here and I will see you next time. Bye.